It's an ML sports steak here from Rosie's Corner. Make sure you stop by for pizza and wings all day long. They've got the Fish Friday tomorrow. And of course, Comfort Foods are back. Monday is Meatloaf. Tuesday is your turkey slot and your Wednesday chicken and biscuits. Uh, keep in mind the hot and cold subs here as well. It's awesome here at Rosie's. Of course, you can order sheet pieces as well. Try the gold fever wings, the garlic parm wings, you name it. It's all here at Rosie's Corner. And of course, you can check them out on Facebook, Instagram, and all social platforms. Rosie's Corner is a proud ML Sports Platter sponsor right off the Bartell Road exit in Brewerton, Route 11 in front of the Brewerton Bridge. Bills and Jags in London on Sunday for the 9.30 kickoff and a couple of storylines to look at for this game. A number one, both teams coming off of, um, you know, some really, I think, impressive wins. I mean, the Jaguars smacked the Atlanta Falcons last week, and Desmond Ritter looks horrible as the Falcons quarterback. I thought he was actually going to be able to play C football to get this team to a postseason berth, win the division and all the rest. you got London and Pitts and uh, B. John Robinson, the youngster, the stud out of Texas, that offense. But the Jaguars shut them down defensively, and the Bills, of course, came at the Miami Dolphins winning 48-20. to The offense was flawless, and when it was 14-14, to the Bills had four straight three and outs forced by the defense, and that was all she wrote for Tua Tunga Viola, Mike McDaniel in Miami. Apparently, they were the greatest team in NFL history going into last week, but the Bills uh, shut that down. A lot of football still left to play, but it, as far as that one week uh, went, you know, the Bills really took it to them. Now, the storyline, uh, not only uh, is both teams winning last week, but another storyline, many storylines, but another story storyline would be that the Jaguars, because they played that game in London, they're staying in London, so their body clocks are staying on that European time. So every single day, they've had the same exact body clock. The Bills have to go travel now, and so that is kind of a real thing, right? Jet lag is a real thing. Changing clocks is a real thing. Different time zones is a real thing and all the rest. Different countries is a, is a real thing. So keep an eye on that in terms of how lethargic or not lethargic the Buffalo Bills would be uh, compared to the Jacksonville Jaguars, unless the Jags have been spending uh, you know, a ton of time in those London pubs. Meanwhile, Josh Allen versus Josh Allen. I think three sacks last week for the big-time defensive edge rusher for the Jags. He'll be going up against one of the best players in the NFL in the quarterback, Josh Allen. Uh, we know that that didn't go well the last time the Bills played the Jags down south, of course. Bills' offensive line needs to be with it again this week. They've had three straight games of awesome play going all the way from Deion Dawkins all the way down. You know, Mitch Morse in the middle, uh, Osiris Torrance and company, McGovern, and, of course, Spencer Brown, who had a rough week one against the Jets. He's been terrific since week one against you know the Raiders and the Commanders and of course the Dolphins respectively they're going to need that again with Trayvon Walker and company and of course Josh Allen you know Andre Sisco is a really uh, good player as well the Syracuse uh, product uh, is a guy who really shoots gaps he plays a physical corner position a high, it's kind of a hybrid uh, position safety corner type of a thing depending on the defensive package uh, he was a hell of a player at Syracuse and he is somebody to watch out for if you're Josh Allen throwing the football Stephon Diggs can he keep it going he had an unbelievable game last week well over 100 yards three touchdowns and all the rest going to be fascinating to see if Stephon Diggs can get going early if he starts catching the ball whether it's you know on the boundary short long whatever you maybe put him in the slot a little bit here and there his amazing footwork once he gets going it, the whole offense starts to break open you know like they're so worried about Diggs in the secondary well let's just dump it to Kincaid dump it to Knox dump it to Hardy dump it to Sherfield dump it to James Cook on a screen maybe decoy something have Josh Allen you know, nimble and quick, step up in the pocket and, and maybe run a little bit as well. So a uh, lot opens up when Diggs gets going. I'm interested to see that. I'm also interested to see how the Bills attack Trevor Lawrence, considering the Sean McDermott defense has been overly aggressive this year. I did not expect this kind of aggressiveness this season, but he went after Jimmy Garoppolo uh, against Vegas. He went after Sam Howell, the commanders, and even though they mostly rushed the four up front on Tuatunga Viola, there were disguises. There were blitzes coming from different angles. Uh, there were spies. There, there, there were decoys. There were different things going on. One minute, you, you send somebody on to delay blitz, and it's Milano, or it's a Taron Johnson, or it's a Trey White. Keep your eye on that. Speaking of Trey White, horrible last week that the guy hurt his Achilles and he's out for the year and out probably for the early part of next. This is a devastating injury for the Bills, but more so for Trey White, the human being. Here's a guy who locked himself in his basement last year, recovering from the ACL injury. He was so depressed. He's a very emotional guy. He wears it all on his sleeve, and to see him throw the helmet back in front of the home crowd, crying, the towel over his head, Jordan Poyer riding on the cart with him, really, really emotional and really, really devastating for Trey White. I feel for this guy. 
He was at one point over the course of a year, year and a half, the best corner in the NFL. Now a major ACL reconstruction, now an Achilles, He's probably never going to be the same again, and this is a sad state of affairs. Remember, it was six years ago when the Buffalo Bills in the draft, only owner Terry Pagula wanted Patrick Mahomes. The Bills traded down, and they uh, allowed Kansas City to go up and take Patrick Mahomes. The Bills took Trey White. Now, I don't think Patrick Mahomes would be the Patrick Mahomes we know him now because the Bills regime then was awfully brutal offensively compared to the wizardry he has in Kansas City. They've been to multiple Super Bowls. He's won two. He's got MVPs, regular season, and Super Bowl. The guy's already, in my opinion, a top 10 quarterback of all time. You need half of it to help you. You need to do your part, but you also need help in the NFL. For as important as a quarterback position is, for as important as quarterbacks are in terms of masking a lot of deficiencies and all the rest, you need help too. You need running backs, receivers, consistent coaching and coordinators. You need all that to be successful as well. And Patrick Mahomes has gotten all of that in KC while he's done everything on his end from a work ethic, studying the playbook standpoint and all the rest. He's done his part and everybody else has helped him as well. It goes hand in hand in the NFL. A lot of that has happened for Josh Allen as well. So I don't know as if Mahomes would be Mahomes right now if he had been picked by the Buffalo Bills. Neither here nor there. White and Mahomes are linked uh, you know, historically, and I'm going to really, really, really hope that White, Trey White gets back. But he might be a very minimal player from now until the end, and that's how serious these injuries are. The Bills attacking Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence has the ability, like a Sam Howell, a Jimmy G, a Tua, many other players in the NFL, to get the ball out quickly. How will that impact the defense? I think that the Bills will probably attack similarly to the way they did Tua last week. Get Russo and Floyd going from the ends. Let the big boys up in the middle like the Daquan Jones, Tim Settle, at Oliver. Push the pocket back and then use a lot of disguises, some corner and safety blitzes and all the rest. Send Micah Hyde here. Send Taron Johnson there. You know, send Matt Milano there. Send Christian Benford here. Send some guys in different spaces uh, and, and go from there. Maybe a wrap right at safety as well. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see how he attacks that offense. Doug Peterson's a brilliant offensive mind. He won a Super Bowl with the Philadelphia Eagles and a backup quarterback with Nick Foles. He's got Trevor Lawrence. He has Calvin Ridley. He has Travis Etienne. He has Zay Jones. He has uh, big-time playmakers, right, to be able to take it down and score. For me, it's going to be the offensive line of the Jags against the defensive line of the Bills and vice versa. That's going to be where the game it will, will be won. And also, I think complementary football, balanced football on offense, and the typical stuff we always talk about when teams are pretty close in terms of talent and in terms of situational football and in terms of situation overall, like the London deal where the Jags have had the body clocks going several days in a row, the Bills are going to get the new body clock going across the pond. I'm going to take the Bills in this situation. And those, by the way, examples would be red zone offense and defense, third down, you know, who gets off the field, who extends the change, turnovers, uh, uh, fundamental football, you know, game management, all those sorts of things that go into a close matchup, which I think this will be for all the things that I just mentioned. Give me the Buffalo Bills in this game. I'm going to go 27 to 23, a fourth quarter long Bills drive that we've seen over and over and over again under the tenure of Josh Allen. He does it again something like a 10 play 75 yarder over five or six minutes gets it done in the fourth quarter the bills make enough plays defensively as well they win the game 27 to 23 if you're in london have fun in london send my best to one of my boys dan reynolds he's over there right now i'm super jealous all you bills mafia fans have a blast i'm mike lindsley here at rosie's corner pizza wings subs fish friday tomorrow get here route 11 in front of the burton bridge in burton if you're in and around central new york a proud ml sports platter sponsor as i I always tell you, enjoy the games.